Sam Lewis is a foreign policy expert and political commentator. Sam, why are we talking about, in the context of Afghanistan, China playing political games? Well, in every situation in the past few months and years, China has been trying to forward its interests. And in Afghanistan, suddenly they realize that they can fill the vacuum that um, NATO forces in the US have left behind. And ultimately, there are three sort of propaganda lines that they're following. The idea that America is leaving and you cannot trust them. Um, you know, and this is part of the Marxist philosophy that they follow, that this is the inevitability of history, that you can't trust the Americans because they're a capitalist society. And ultimately, China used to be a feudalist society. Then under uh, the nationalists in the 30s, they were also capitalist. And then the communists came along and they saved China. And only sort of the uh, you know, socialism with Chinese characteristics is the way that countries should look. Um, in the future and that, you know, each country should have their own way of sorting out their, their future and they shouldn't rely on the US. Another way, uh, another propaganda line they've been following is that not all countries can follow a foreign model such as democracy, um, because ultimately a country will have different cultural and historical conditions. And they've been pushing this for years. They've been saying, you know, we're not a democracy because we're China. We have Confucian heritage. Democracy would never work. And the fact that Taiwan is a democracy shows that that's just not the case. You know, Chinese people can be democratic, but they're just pushing this line now and they're saying that, you know, don't become dem democratic if you don't want to. Um, you know, if the, uh, people like the Taliban want to come to power, that's OK. And finally, this is potentially the most worrying is they've now cast complete doubt on all U.S. intelligence. You know, uh, in the next few weeks, um, it will draw to the end of the 90 days that President Biden gave his intelligence services to figure out if the Wuhan lab, uh, to find evidence of whether the Wuhan lab um, basically lost control of the coronavirus in the initial months of the, uh, the pandemic and, and, you know, it leaked from there. And they've, the fact that um, the US has cast out on their own intelligence within Afghanistan, that they didn't predict what was going to happen, the Chinese are now picking up on that and saying, well, if you can't trust them in Afghanistan, why are you trusting them anywhere? Why are you listening to them when it comes to the Wuhan lab conspiracy, as they see it? And is this rhetoric largely designed for their own people, or is this supposed to be destabilizing America's position on the world stage? It's a bit of both, really. I think they want to show their people that, you know, their decision is the right decision, that, you know, socialism with Chinese characteristics is the only way for them to live. And, you know, the great rejuvenation of the Chinese people and the Chinese nation, and, you know, it's all part of that political rhetoric. But they are also sort of pointing out to, you know, African countries and other countries in Southeast Asia that you can't trust America, that, you know, if they don't want to stay, they won't stay. And you can't trust their words. You know, the last few weeks, uh, the last few days, um, Chinese media has been showing, um, you know, evidence of George Bush and Barack Obama sort of saying, you know, we'll look after the Afghan, Afghan people in the long run. And yet, you know, the last few days, we've seen that the Americans have, you know, got out of the country and then it's fallen to the Taliban. And the Chinese have just leapt on this and, and are going to use it. Um, for purposes to, to show other nations that you just can't trust the, the US-led order. The former American president went to meet key figures in the Taliban. Now, China is doing that and trying to create bilateral relationships with the people who have taken over their near neighbour. And we know that China has the Belt and Road Initiative where they want to invest in countries, um, usually with very complex and strict repayment programmes, but also in doing so want to be able to seize assets. Do you think a lot of China's interest in Afghanistan is the, the ge geographical position of it and the fact that it has things like rare earth minerals and and if that's the case should we be worried about this or just let china get on with it i mean they are the world's factory basically well i think they do see afghanistan as an opportunity to, to become part of the belt and road initiative as you mentioned i mean in 2018 for example almost 80 percent of afghanistan's 11 billion dollars of public expenditure came from donor grants and you know, no one's going to give the money to the taliban from the west now so the taliban are going to go to the chinese who don't care about human rights and don't care what the Taliban are doing within the country and, you know, they'll just flood them with cash. And yes, China see, um, you know, lithium deposits within Afghanistan and they see that as potentially uh, a vital source that they should control. Um, but they also want to extend sort of the China-Pakistan economic corridor, which they've already invested 60 billion US dollars worth of uh, money into, and they're going to try and extend that into Afghanistan. 
Is there a concern for the West here if, if there ends up being a bit of an unholy alliance between nations such as China, Afghanistan under the Taliban, Iran, Pakistan, you rightly mentioned there? Um, or, or, or are they sort of all going after their own ends and objectives and won't ever create any sort of centrifugally held together global position? Well, look, I think a lot of the times, especially within these societies where you know they try and spout that nothing ever happens, you, that nothing bad ever happens. They try and say within their own medias that you know nothing bad happens within China. It's always lies that the West is saying. Um, the fact is that there are problems within. You know, I don't think, for example, Russia were happy when China said that they're an Arctic power. They forget that Russia is between them and the Arctic. You know, I don't think that they are completely aligned on every single issue, um, but they will, for the purposes of the cameras and for the purposes of Western media, say, yeah, we're, we're aligned on these issues because China seems to think that 95% you know, of the world is behind them. The only people that aren't are the media and you know, the political classes of each country. And what about the fact that in China there has been utterly deplorable treatment of minorities, particularly Muslim minorities? We've seen these forced detention camps um, in Xinjiang uh, where up to about a million Uyghurs might be being held and, and, and made to do forced labour. Uh, would that not be something the Taliban would say, well, come on, you don't treat Muslims very well and we want to set up essentially a caliphate, you know, Muslim law-driven nation in Afghanistan? Well, look, I. I like to think I'm good at empathy, but I don't think I can empathize with anyone within the Taliban. So I, I can't speak on their behalf, but I definitely think that China doesn't trust them. I don't think anybody trusts the Taliban, really. No one knows what's going to happen within the next few months and what's going what's to turn out from uh, a Taliban-led government of some sort. But I think that China also overestimates how much uh, the Taliban will crack down on the um, uh, terrorists within Afghanistan who want to um, attack China. There's the East uh, East Turkestan Islamic movement that wants to, you know, create a separate Uyghur state. And I don't think China realizes that the Taliban won't be able to control them um, as as much as they hope. But we'll simply see how that turns out in the next few months. And looking at China uh, overall, in general, I mean, China's definitely become a lot more assertive geopolitically and is very much stamping itself on the world stage. But is that something to be feared? That is a tough question because it ultimately depends. I don't think that, um, you know, I'm a huge fan of China. I have many Chinese friends. I love Chinese culture, Chinese history. But I do not, I am not a fan of the... Chinese Communist Party. And I think that, you know, through the Belt and Road Initiative, it's very much extending Chinese communist influence around the world. Now, I'm all for cultural exchanges. I'm all for, you know, everybody getting to learn the language. I, I, I know a bit of Chinese and I absolutely love learning it. It's, I love trying to do calligraphy, etc. But China, uh, the current path that China is taking is not a positive because it's ultimately allowing people like the Taliban to come to power. You know, if the, Ch if the Chinese had been on our side, um, during this war, then potentially the Taliban will not be coming to power. And we know that the Taliban will lead to human rights abuses and less women's rights and a lack of education within Afghanistan. And that's not a positive. So whatever this new world order China is trying to create is it will not benefit the world. But there are other parts of Chinese society and culture that I think, yes, should be exported and should be explored and, and you know, shared with the West. Sam, thank you ever so much for coming and talking about this with us. That's Sam Lewis, a foreign policy expert.